Hi, welcome to Busy Bee Sewing Projects. Today we're going to make an ornament and we're going to use some old jewelry. I happen to have a whole bunch of old clip-on earrings that um, belong to my husband's grandmother. When she passed away, I got her jewelry box and I mean all the relatives picked out what jewelry they wanted, but one of the things left over after we all went through it was all these clip-on earrings that were really quite gaudy and not something I would usually wear, but they are so pretty. But I have a lot of them, so I came up with this Christmas ornament to use some of these old clip-on earrings, and I'm going to show you today how to make it. So, let's get started. Okay, let's get started. I'm going to show you two methods that we can use to do this, to turn this into an ornament. The first method, you need a strip of ribbon about... I cut this one 10 inches. I'm starting to think that you don't need 10 inches. It may be 6 will work, but I'm using 10. It's nice and long. You need some thread, same color as your ribbon, and a needle. And then the first thing we're going to do is we're going to sew our ends together. So I'm going to put right sides together, which means my the back of my ribbon is out. And I want to sew these together. Now I could use my sewing machine and sew across there, but my machine has red thread in it, and I think I can probably sew this by hand quicker than I can thread my machine. So I'm just going to go across like that. And then I'm going to go back again. Wherever I was up, I'm going to go down. Wherever I was down, I'm up. So just kind of go back on again. We want a loop. All right, that'll work. I'm going to tie a knot. Put a couple in there so it'll stay real good. Okay, I'm going to turn this right side out. And I haven't cut my thread. I'm just going to come up in my ribbon because I'm on the right side now. What I want to do is I want to gather this side of the ribbon. So I'm just going to go up and down. See that? I want to do that all the way around the bottom edge, or one edge. I don't know how you'd know if it's the top or bottom. Anyway, do that all the way around. And what I do is I gather a bunch on my needle, and then when my needle gets kind of full, I'll pull it through. And do that all the way around. Okay, we've now gone all the way around, We're back to where we started. We've done just a simple stitch all the way around, and now we are going to draw this tight and ruffle it. So, I'm going to get it pulled fairly tight. You have a little bit of hole in the middle. And we're going to secure this end. Before you tie a knot in it, what you probably should do, though, is just take a few stitches right there. Just little itty-bitty stitches. And that's actually going to secure it more than your knot. Just the fact that it's stitched right there several times. It's kind of like backstitching on your machine holds it. Alright, and now I'll tie a knot just for to be extra doubly certain it's not going anywhere. I'm going to pull my thread to the back. Not that it really matters. Alright, cut that off. Find some little scissors here. I've also got some... Get that all trimmed. Why, those scissors are dull. Alright, and there I have my loop. Now I'm going to kind of try to 
press it flat a little bit. This is why earlier I said that maybe you could get away with maybe about six inches because this is really full. It doesn't really even want to lay flat. So I'm thinking you could probably get by with less. I'm going to take my earring and I could sew it on there. Or, if you can, stick it through the hole and clip it. That works too. Isn't that pretty? Now, I've actually done this already with another one, and I'm going to mount them back to back. And I'm going to put the thick sides opposite each other, because they're really thick in one spot, so I've got this thick side there and this one opposite. So then it'll be a two-sided ornament. As it spins on the tree, both sides will be really pretty. So I'm either going to sew those together or put a blob of glue in between. And then I'm going to put some, probably some maybe a gold thread on top, I think. And put a loop so then you can hang it. So that is one way to use that. Let me go ahead and get these together and put a loop on it. All right, here is my finished project. As you can see, double-sided earrings, some vintage earrings. What's nice about this project is I didn't ruin these earrings at all. And if somebody later wanted to use them as earrings again or something else, they could very easily take this apart and reuse them. I did use hot glue to glue them, but hot glue didn't damage it at all. You'd just be able to pick that off later, so. There we go. That's method one. And then we're going to try another method that uses um, some satin, scraps of satin. So I'll be back after I get that set up. All right. For the second method, you're going to use a scrap of satin. I happen to have this lovely eggplant. If you can see how it's a pretty dark purple color. And I cut a circle out. And when you're deciding on the size of your circle, you want it to be a bit bigger than your original circle. So I looked at this, and I wanted about that much again. So it's about one inches, then I want another inch all the way around. So you kind of have to double your width. And to get a nice circle, I actually headed for my kitchen, and I look for anything that I can find that's about twice as big as the circle I have. So I found this mug, I'm going to use that, or I did use that, traced a circle, got my circle cut out, and I need some purple thread, a piece of purple thread, of course a needle, where's my needle? And what we're going to do is we're going to make a yo-yo, not, you know, a toy yo-yo, but in sewing terms, we're going to make something called a yo-yo. I'm not going to knot my thread. I'm actually going to leave it um, unknotted, and you're going to see later. Now, we're going to stitch all the way around here, but I want to fold it down a little bit when I do. So, just pressing it over a teeny bit, stitch, teeny bit, stitch. We're going to use the same stitch we did before, just, I think it's called a running stitch, up, down. This stuff is thick. We'll see how this works. I haven't made one of these before, so we're going to discover together if this was a good idea or not. Anyway, I'm going to do this all the way around the outside.
All right, I've gone all the way around, and I actually want to end up on the right side. And you want to go past your stopping point before, just a little bit. I want my thread to come up on my right side. I notice my old thread doesn't come up on the right side, so I'm going to pull out that last stitch so it's up on the outside. So now I have both threads up on the outside, and I've gone slightly past the first one. And it looks kind of like a cup right now, but we're going to pull those two and pull them tight. And we're going to end up with this little thingy. And sewers call that a yo-yo. It's hard to see that dark fabric on the camera, isn't it? Anyway, pull it tight. And since I didn't knot it, what I can do is I can tie my two threads together, which works really good for getting it super tight, is having the two threads to knot together. So I'm just going to around and through. Pull it tight and do that several times. Just like not in my shoelace. All right, cut that off. There. If I can get the light on it so you can see it there. And we're going to take our earring. I have some with a nice purple to them. Stick that in the hole and shut it. And voila! We've made another method for doing that. So you could just stop actually there because it's already got a nice finished back. If you wanted to, if you only had a few earrings and you wanted to make more than one ornament with each. Or you could make another yo-yo, put your other earring in that one, and do them back to back, and that way your ornament would be double-sided. So I'm going to go ahead and use up my earrings that I've got, because I have about a dozen of these things. So I'm going to make another yo-yo and attach it to the back of this one. I'll be back in a little bit. All right, the purple one is now done. Kind of hard to see, isn't it? But um. I've got two yo-yos back to back. I use hot glue again. It's just so quick and easy to stick those together. You don't have to worry about it. And a little gold thread to hang it up. Try and decide which one I like better. The purple on the yo-yos or the blue puffball. I'm going to give one of these to my mother-in-law for Christmas. And I think I'm going to give her the blue one. That's her favorite color. And the purple one's they're just not as tight, so I think I'm going to hang on to those. I'm also missing a stone. don't know if I lost that here today working on it, so I'm going to hang on to that one. One more thing I'm going to do with these is I am going to put them in a box to give them as a gift. And in the top of the box, obviously I haven't done it yet. It's Wednesday, Christmas is Sunday, I'm getting there. I'm going to take a picture of this and tape it to the top of the box, and I'm going to write whose earrings these belong to so that my mother-in-law won't forget. And I'm going to do it for my pair, too. I'm going to find a box to keep them in and put that box. So that way, when I store them from year to year for the Christmas tree, every year when I get them out, we'll be remembered that, oh, those were Juanita's earrings. And we can remember her and her sense of style. Because I found after 16 years of marriage, you start to forget things. Uh, my husband and I have lost five grandparents in the 16 years in we're really starting to forget sometimes what belonged to who and when we got it. So there we go. We had a discussion the other day about a desk, where a desk came from. And it's pretty sad you can't remember. Okay, so there we have it. Some vintage earrings turned into some pretty Christmas ornaments. I hope you enjoy. Thank you for joining me for this Busy Bee Project. Goodbye.